Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolades at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this next match will be between Felthas and Lamadeus on Lonely Oasis. Let's begin. Lamadeus going for Cloaky Bot Factory, and Felthas going for Cloaky as well. I don't know if the reign of hovercraft is no longer the thing, or if it's just it's just because this map does not really play well with vehicles. Probably the latter, given Lamadeus's thus far love of hovercrafts. But yeah, this is a bad map for vehicles. This this ramp here, which the Glaive is about to take, is bot only. There is no way for a vehicle to get down here, so bots are a good choice. On the other hand, Felthaus being very forward here, they're going for the they're going for the, essentially the play of having your factory in front to make the defense a little bit easier, or actually make offense a little bit easier, but also gambling on no air support coming in right at the start, so they can just build up in the back. So using their starting plateau as essentially a backyard expansion. This is a kind of play style I actually quite like, and I think we should see more often. And we do see it on maps like Trojan Hills, where you can actually set up in a forward position right off the bat. Your start location is forward, and I like what Feltas is doing. Lamadeus, on the other hand, I think they might be a little bit more concerned about possible air raids, and either that or just concerned about not building units quickly enough. So they went for the inside of their base and going from there. Which does make this a bit more of a forward expansion, a little bit diff more difficult to defend, but not by much. The The difference is minor. I just like the attitude of trying to keep, take as much in your backyard as possible, rather than making everything in front of you. Just because it's so much easier to defend things that are behind you in this game. Anyhow, Felthos is going for a little bit of a weaker economy. Lamadeus has already started up with, well, five metal extractors, about to get the sixth. Felthos just now finishing... A couple extra ones, though. So the economy's about on par, metal-wise. Energy-wise, though, Felthos is definitely focused on getting the energy second. They're not likely to excess, but they are... They're doing a thing which is something I actually learned from Google Frog, which is basically don't worry about your metal income until your metal income is close to excess. Like, just get metal first, and then get energy, and then you'll be fine. Now, Lamadeus has actually managed to do both thanks to a few well-placed wind generators, and that's, that's worked out. But that is wind generators, so... 0.5 to 2.5, still worth it, I'd say. This is not a bad wind map for wind, especially in the top levels. And we are seeing Felthas go for that as well. So, yeah, as a general rule, don't worry about your metal excess. As like, Sorry, worry about metal excess. Don't worry about metal storage. If metal is being stored at the start of the game, but you're building up a bunch of metal extractors, that's fine. As long as you spend it eventually, then you won't actually excess it. And at this point, Felthas is probably going to set up Conjurer to help out here. Hopefully, they are getting to the point where they need it. Lamadeus, on the other hand, already on that. They've had a Conjurer on their factory for most of this game, so they're a bit ahead military-wise. Actually, you know what? Just occurred to me. Just occurred to me a thing that I should really put on here. I apologize I haven't had it on sooner. The Attrition Counter! That's a thing that I really should have had more often. But we'll now have from here on out. Also, wow, the skin really fits in. I like it. Oh, I didn't have to do that. Nice. Alright, so. This point, Lamadeus is... A I'd say they're ahead mil militarily. They are in a position where they can easily swarm in and start wrecking up the place. Failthus, or Failthus rather, Failthus is going to be in a bit of a tighter spot. They're fine economically, though. Like, they are spending their money. They are expanding. Actually, expanding quite rapidly. If they can protect this expansion here, Failthus will be ahead. Lamadeus is coming in with twice as many glaives, though. Oh, right, right. That's why I didn't want to put it there. That's why I had it there. Anyway, thank you for the chat popping out of the watermark, though. So, yeah, that's the thing, is that with the... With this setup, there's basically... Not much that Lamadeus has on Fieldthos Fail right now. Fieldthos just needs to defend. If they can defend, and now this area's in their backyard too, they actually kind of have control over the north. And Lamadeus doesn't quite have control over the south, and certainly not the south center. Now, like I said, this, de well, this is the backyard. This up here, the north. Th that's an area that is only as defended as it is because of this forward expansion. And actually, even then, not so much. The Glaives are going to go around the back, and they are going to find nothing. Failthos had not expanded there yet, although that's actually really good to know that Failthos would have to take this plateau and a little bit of the sides in order to truly protect the northern expansion. But it doesn't matter. Lamadeus has just put a bunch of their glaives in a position where they're about to go down, I think. It looks kind of bad. 
And at this point, Lamadeus is not really holding the line. Their plateau is essentially done for. They didn't lose all the glaives, though. This is actually... Ooh, that's a bit of a bait. I like it. The warrior is right there. No glaives there, but a warrior is there. That should be enough. The glaives aren't even going for it. That is enough glaives to kill a warrior if they are used in a way that actually focuses the warrior, but there was no knowledge of that warrior, so nicely done. Unfortunately, a conjurer was lost, in part because of the warrior. Bit of a shame, but that conjurer was not doing anything super forward, so it's not as painful as it can often be. I always say, go for the conjurers. And I say that because if the conjurers are out of the base, that so they're further forward expanding, and you kill them, that adds minutes to the expansion time. But... If they're inside the base not doing much, then it's mildly annoying, but not as big of a deal. And at this stage of the game, Failthoss right now has about three conjurers just in their base alone. And I think they have... I think, are these all Failthosses? Yeah. So Failthoss, they are not hurting for conjurers. They are not hurting for money. Wow. A lot of that being reclaimed, yes, but they're still... Their static economy is still ahead of Lamadeus. Lamadeus, go back to them. They have still maintain a bit of a military presence and a military advantage, but it seems to actually be waning. Losing all of those glaives was a blow. Now, at the same time, Fieldthos doesn't have a whole lot beyond the glaives and a few warriors. They are going for storage. Oh, they're actually they're worried about the commander dying, apparently. Going for storage already. The commander is not even under threat, but I'm guessing they're expecting Lamadeus is going to attack the commander very shortly. And that's not entirely true at the moment. Should point out, by the way, that Lamadeus has actually lost far fewer units overall than Fieldthos right now. So Fieldthos' slight economic advantage has not yet translated into a complete military advantage, and especially with the Rockos coming in on top of the Warriors, especially with that position. Oh, this is gonna hurt. This is really gonna hurt. Just luckily for the Warriors, they are still getting missed from time to time, but that is no good. Fieldthos, I, I don't see them managing to do a whole lot of damage here. They're trying! They're getting rid of all the glaives they can, but those are glaives focusing on a warrior. Only four of them go down for the cost of a warrior. That's not that efficient. Failthos has managed to get their themselves in a bit of a better position as a result of that fight, though. Like just looking at the attrition counter, Lamadeus did lose a bit more cost, so it's getting a bit more even. Failthos should be able to recover from that. And with the Rockos coming in here... Oh, the Rockos, however, aren't going to be super useful if they're trying to fight other Rockos. They'll kind of distract each other. But Lamadeus with a few more Rockos in the back, which, sorry, a few more Warriors in the back, but the Rockos are going to be able to get to. The Rockos should hopefully get rid of this, and it's, yeah, they're still having a hard time hitting Warriors. I thought they were going to be better at that, but nope, still the Imperial Marksman, or Imperial Stormtrooper Marksman Academy. That doesn't matter if the Warriors are running away, but actually, no, no, that, that is a bit better. They are actually hitting, the Warriors wouldn't have been hit before. Great. Uh, people were asking me about that for a while, and yeah, it looks like the Rockos have gotten a bit better. However, the point is, is that they're still not very good against Glaives, nor should they be. But yeah, at this point, Lamadeus managing to take the south side of the map. Not managing as much to deal with Felthos, though. Felthos keeping Lamadeus' Rockos at a standstill in the center. As the Glaives come in, the Warriors for Lamadeus should be in in time to save some of the Rockos, but... Oh, maybe not enough? Felthos is going to go in. Oh, that's super risky. That's way too risky. Felthos losing a lot of units in the process. At the same time, though, further south, this is far more successful for Fieldthos. Lamadeus is starting to lose quite a bit of cost here. Managing to take some territory in the process, though. Lamadeus is still a bit behind economically, but not much. The two players are very nearly even. At this point, the biggest thing that I would say breaking the two of them would be either something managed to come in through this line here. Like, if the center is broken, if Fieldthos loses the center control, Lamadeus can come in through there. Lamadeus is going through the hardest part of the map right now. They are trying to stop Fieldthos from breaking their own lines, and that makes sense. That is worth doing. But they there is an opening right in the center. A couple sides through the center like that, that could, or even just warriors through the center, that could easily destroy what Fieldthos has built up so far. And as it is, Lemon is, is managing to push back the south side of the map as well, or the eastern side of the map. Not quite as effectively, but Fieldhouse's forces are getting quite bunched up, and Lamadeus's are managing to dodge the rockets a bit more effectively. It's subtle, but it's happening. It's helping. And there's... Ah, there's the glaives. There's the attempt. Lamadeus is going for it. Fieldhouse, however, does have a few units already prepared for defense, so it's a good idea. Didn't quite manage to work out. 
But yeah, Lemidus is still attacking on multiple fronts. That's, that's as far as I'm concerned, a correct move. It, there's a fairly large opening between the defenses, and I don't know if Lamedes is aware of this. I think they are. Now, they're not entirely aware of it. They're partially aware of it. They're probably aware enough that they have the correct a correct enough view. And they are acting on it. However, the center is causing them a few problems. The one thing about the center, though, this is shallow water. It's fairly shallow. I'm not sure it affects the speed all that much. It might slow them down only a tiny bit. But water does slow down ground units. Just a bit. At least at this this depth. At this point, though... Oh, this plateau is taken. If Lamadeus takes the plateau, that provides a flanking route. Oh, if they can get rid of the defenders, that provides a very powerful flanking route. And they're about to as well. Lamadeus is really going for it. Fealthus is not coming up the hill to help save that. Now, back at home, Lamadeus is going for a gunship plant, and Filthus going for a Firewalker Assault Brigade. That's what they... That's what they often go for. That's the common choice, is the Firewalker. I mean, if you have that, then actually, all running is already in play. If you have that, you can easily break your opponent's lines. Especially when they're setting up caretakers and such. Like, that goes down no problem, and Filthus taking full advantage of that to take... The one lane in the southeast, but not enough. The eastern side is getting counterattacked. Banshee's coming into Fieldhouse's as base as Lamadeus goes and takes that plateau to the southeast. Not much of an air defense in the main base, and a lot of wind generators. This is juicy. I mean, some valiant efforts coming into the Rockos. The Warriors are the best bet, though. That needs to get forward if those Banshees are going to die. The Warriors are going to kill them. Shouldn't be a problem. Grimlin is here as well, but... Already losing about 10, 10 energy worth of wind generators. It's not great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Should be recoverable, though. And as it is, there are enough warriors that the Banshees aren't going to be a massive threat. I mean, Lamedeus does need to be careful about that. And we did see already that there were gremlins. There was already an expectation of an air assault. And all things considered, not a whole lot of damage was dealt. Problem, however, though, is the ground assault coming up front is still pushing Fieldthos into their base, and Fieldthos don't does not quite have control over the north side. They're managing to maintain it over to the east. It's still a little bit broken. If this reclaimed wreck field can go to Fieldthos in some capacity, though, then it'll it'll be worth it. Right now, the Lamadeus is taking and managing to get a slight economic advantage as a result. At this point, we only see military units up front, though. I like the Firewalker setup to get rid of the, the Reclaimers, though. That's... That's what I mean, though. It, we have Fieldthos with Firewalkers, with artillery. They can actually deal with basically anything coming in in advance. Their workers can have a pretty safe time getting rid of all this stuff. Just cleaning it up. Turning it into metal for Fieldthos. And I mean, this... Tw wow. 28... Wow, okay. 2,800 metal worth of stuff. That's a lot of metal. Yeah, I should really use that. That would... Whoever gets that is going to likely win the game. If anyone gets that, I don't know if anyone will. We saw Lamadeus go for quite a bit of it, but it seems like that is the hottest part of the map. There's not... <laughs> yeah, I say that with a fire, of course. But in every sense of the word, it is the hottest part of this map right now. And I can understand the reluctance to set up any reclaimers. I don't... I don't see a whole lot else being set up, though. It looks like the center has been more or less defended. You know, with enough rockers and the Firewalker here for support, it's very difficult right now for Lamadeus to break through at any point. And Fieldthos is slowly but surely getting an economic advantage. Actually, with this base very nearly broken, that could do it. Like, this base going down is going to be pretty much the last thing, I think. Because with that down... There's no defenses behind it, so it was a pretty clean break up until the southern expansion, or until this... Well, the expansion over in the main base, the, effectively the natural expansion, is a little bit more open. But this is where Fieldhouse would benefit greatly from setting up a reclaim operation. The Brawler's been pushed back. Most of the units coming in to try to deal with the forces are getting pushed back as well. The Firewalker's doing a great job just maintaining a position... The only downside, of course, is that Lamadeus is getting all this reclaim, and that's... That's still pretty worth it. I mean, the Conjurers aren't that expensive. They're only like 180, 140 metal each, so if they're sitting in the reclaim field, 
Actually, no, that's true. That is actually kind of expensive. They need to spend 30 seconds in the reclaim field to be worth it. So, okay, fair enough. I can see why you might not want to completely go for it right then. But there we go. There's Filthus with the Conjurers. We should see a reclaim start pretty shortly, as soon as Filthus goes back to them and gets their attention. This is... This is turning around, though. Filthus... Or not just turning around. Filthus is getting the pressure in. The Firewalkers have broken it. The Banshees and Brawlers have not done enough to actually deal with all the forces on the ground as much as the Firewalkers have, and that will secure it. Unless Lamadeus has something even cleverer coming out, and they are going for the Heavy Tank Factor, going for Reapers, this could be that clever thing. I mean, Reapers will be able to just take it through the fire and not worry about anything. If they get through the fire and manage to get to the Firewalkers, that... If they break that, that opens up a lot. Not to mention the Brawlers don't have to worry about Firewalkers. They do have to worry about Gremlins, of course, and Razors if they come up, but Failed Us' commander goes down with no anti-air to help deal with this. The Firewalker going down as well. The center actually might get broken as a result. Field us scrambling to deal with that, and so they should. Or at least, I, I could see that being a great idea. And it's not something Lamadeus is going for yet. Field us going for the counterattack, and I agree with that. Get that counterattack, get the pressure on. I don't think Field us realizes that there is the heavy tanks coming in, that there are a couple of Reapers that have already been built up. But if Field us can maintain pressure and maintain the center... They should be fine. They should be able to recover from that attack Lamadeus put on them. And there it is. There's a southern expansion going down. Like I said, with that southeast expansion broken, there's basically nothing stopping this southern expansion from being broken. And not a whole lot stopping the natural expansion from being broken either. Lamadeus did not have a very strong defense infrastructure. They pretty much had the front line and that was it. And they had a strong front line. The Firewalkers just melted it. That was the real problem. Yeah, you know, all the Firewalkers coming in, they came in, they... I mean, okay, the Firewalkers melted, but friendly fire is starting to cause problems there. So that's the thing, is that because of the Firewalkers, there just wasn't as much Lamadeus could do. It wasn't as cost-effective. And Lamadeus realizing this throws in the towel. And that is game. And I realize I might actually be... Oh, I got the attrition value backwards. Failed House was ahead the entire time. I did not realize that's how it worked. I'm sorry, I haven't really used this much. So yeah, Lamadeus was actually behind the entire time. Failed House was actually ahead the entire time. And yeah, no wonder. So well done, Failed House. That was just efficient overall. If you look at the unit value, yeah, Failed House basically had a unit value advantage from about the three minute mark. And after that point, just continued it up. And the metal income, mostly advantageous the entire time. Just keeping it slightly ahead, making sure that there was no easy way for Lamadeus to push in. Lamadeus did have a pretty good shot with this area here before the Firewalkers came in. Like, that would have broken down. That actually had it not been for the Firewalkers, Lamadeus could have broken through, dealt a ton of damage to the main base, and crippled Fieldhouse. That was... that was good. I like that. Next and last match is going to be between Snugglebase and Divefreund on intersection, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.